seated. I'm going to ask the Dean family to come on. I told them uh, I was just going to turn it to them and uh, they just sing to the Lord got through with them. Amen. Amen. I can just tell y'all like to get your brains on. Yeah. Yeah. Man, let that praise thing rock and give them yeah. a hand. I'm telling you. What. <laughs> How many knows what you can't tell me I'm dying is? Come on. Nobody ever heard that song? I know there's been a few heard that song. <laughs> well, listen, we like to have church. If you ain't heard it, you get ready to. You know? <laughs> If you don't want to have church, I don't see right now, Pastor, you might as well back up a little bit. Because if they stand up here, they're going to have church. And we up here, we're going to have church. So have church with us. Let me know this life after this one. You listen to me. This is a true story I'm saying about. And lay on his deathbed. The doctor said, I'm sorry, as we gathered by his side. So I took him by the hand, say my last goodbye. When a frail, feeble voice spoke up, gave me this reply. What do you think he said? Jesus loves them, and He died for their sins. 
lost her mother six weeks ago. The doctor said, I'm sorry, as we gathered by her side. True. So we took her by the hand. Say my last goodbyes. Where a frail and feeble voice broke up. Gave me these replies. She's probably up there looking down right now saying this. You can't.
sit down because worms want to stay next. <laughs> this is good. God has blessed us. We have had a magnificent time this weekend in Mississippi. We ain't from Mississippi. Can you tell? When we go up north, I thought it was Mississippi. Mississippi. What is it? Whatever you want to call it. When we go up north, we ain't from up north either. They don't want to hear us sing out here. It's talk. I said, we talk for you. I said, well, we eat good. I can do two things. I can eat and I can sing. That's the main ingredients. And the other most important ingredient is the anointing of God. I'm telling you what, God has, and I ain't a bit ashamed to say he's anointed us to write. He's anointed us to sing. The altar filled up in Columbus this morning. That's what it's about to me. When the water's struggled, if you want him, get in it. If you have a need, get in it. I'm telling you, I'm so glad to be in Black Zion Pentecostal Church. Is this called Black Zion, Mississippi? Pontotoc? Black Zion Community. So glad to be here. This is my beautiful wife, Tina. She can smile. <laughs> this and God is what makes me what I am. No, I'm not. The kids, they're just assets. That's it. They come and go. When the kids all grow up and leave, then, uh, then it's me and Mama. Yeah, but I didn't leave. <laughs> I'm still with you. you ain't do it, man. My poor old dad. My, I, I told this. Don't please don't show this in Kentucky. My poor old dad. He. I, I tell you what. I told this last night or night before. So Taylor warns me about talking about him. But he'll lay a rock down, and he'll lay four rocks down. He'll build him a room on. You don't know about nothing about pouring no foundation. That's what they're here today and go tomorrow, people. Yeah. Buddy, I'm, I'm alive today. I can stay in it today. If it falls tomorrow, then I probably wasn't supposed to have it. So don't do it right. You know, don't do it right. When you move out of the house, it's where your bedroom off the house. When a kid was born, dad would build a room on When you build up, moved out, he tore the room off. Because he didn't have to heat it. Now, I'm telling you the truth. I, I don't like singers that get up and they tell lies. I'm telling you the truth. Dad would tear the room off the house. And if you come back, he'd have to build it up. And, uh, but God has truly blessed us, and I love this area. I'm going to tell you people, don't let us die in this area. Right. Keep us down here. Because I'm telling you, anybody here from up north? Good, because northern people don't do this. <laughs> they stand there and they cross their arms. And that, that's all they do. Okay. And then they, you get one of these. And then they tell you how happy they are that you were there. <laughs> I think, well, my goodness, you could have made it a lot easier on me if you could stood up and back your hands. <laughs> Jimmy wrote a song called Streams of Mercy. Do you remember the night that you got saved? How many, how many remembers when the Lord first took that you heart? How many remembers that how the, the anointing of God touched you or the word that the brother brought or, or somebody just got up some of those old hymns and you didn't really know what was going on. Tears just started flowing. Almost this, this song that Jimmy wrote called Streams of Mercy. And, uh, uh, and see if that might take you back to that night or that day. I was going to play a guitar, but it's not that. Just get <laughs> Thank you. 
nothing will change. He is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. I think I started to tell you who we were a while ago. We are from Harlan County, a little place called Kenford, Kentucky. And if you'll look on the map, the road we live on is the end of the road. I told them the other day, I saw a sign that said Innsville. Yeah. Anybody yeah. in here from Innsville? <laughs> Ain't nowhere you want to be. I guess not, because you, when you went there, that was the end of it. The last place on earth. That little corner we live in is, is, is the last place on earth, I believe. But I know what? You can get to Mississippi. All right. And that's what I like. I said, I'd like to move down here. Well, come on. I'd like to move down here. This is my kind of, this is my kind of place to worship the Lord. Where you can feel something. Right. For the anointing and, and the Spirit is welcome. Right. Don't mention me. I'll see you in the <laughs> Wrote a song called When God Speaks. How many believe God will speak to you? Amen. He'll speak to you if you need. I tell you what, God's good. I, I wait, I like to, I take my time, and I want to feel the Spirit, and I want to feel what the Spirit wants to know. I'm telling you, if God speaks to you tonight, and this is where you feel like you need to be, don't you mind us. Right. Don't you mind us. That, that ain't no problem. Come on. We love the Lord, and we'll get down and pray. We will quit singing, if that's what it takes. But we wrote a song called, When God Speaks, Hear His Voice. We love to write stuff that reaches people's heart and what they feel because we've been there. And I don't think you can write a song. Brother, you can't get up here and preach something you don't know nothing about. Amen. You study that Bible, you learn, and those things and the struggles of life that you've been through and the instruction that God gave you in that Bible to help you through it, right. you know what? You can tell somebody else what it's about. Right. But if you ain't been there, you can't do it. Is that all right to say hang on? Yeah. 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 I got told once I didn't have a proper grant. This is about one of them big Nashville producers. I said, well, I ain't never going to have a proper grant. Where I come from, that don't happen. So I'm getting you when God speaks for you right there. Me and my wife wrote this song, and the last verse of this song is probably one of the most powerful songs that I've ever sung in my life because I know where we come from. I know the struggles we've had. I know on the road how, how you go hungry at times. And Sister Cindy and, and them fan us so good last night. And, and I'm telling you, it means a lot to get fed. It does. Because sometimes we started at 6 o'clock this morning. And we ain't been back to the little camper we're staying in yet. And that's all right with me. Because I'm saying tonight, tomorrow, all week, it don't matter to me. Somebody says, well, you ain't got a life. That is my life. That is my life. Play that song. Don't you listen to the words of this song. And if God speaks to you, please hear it. Because it may just be what you need.
what's going to do. We've got a song called Consume Me. How many of you wants to be consumed by the Holy Ghost? Oh, yeah. By the fire? Yeah. We'll just be consumed. Amen. Um, that's what we want most of all. Play that track. <coughs> I don't need to talk. I need to, I need to sing that song. <laughs>
And I thought, and, and the way Tommy is, if somebody called, yeah, we're going to be there. Her mother got bad, and, and uh, for some reason or another, we never got a phone call. So we went to be with the mother until the Lord decided, hey, you know what, I want her to come walk with me now. And just as soon as she went home to be with the Lord, the phone went ringing again. And I'm talking, we were booked. This was six weeks ago. Yeah. And now we're booked to the end of October. Praise God. And I said, well, you know, I had to give you a break because you had to be there for your wife with, with her little mother. And, and you had to see her off to meet me. So I am going. I had to give you about a four-week break right there let that happen. And then, boom, i got to have you back. Yeah. So God knows what he's doing. I'm yeah. so glad that the Holy Ghost knows <laughs> what he's doing. He's a gentleman. I want you to play Living Wonders and, and let Tina sing that if she will. Thank you. 
And you know how good it, it feels to get in a church that knows that once you get... See, um, America has got away from the foot of the cross. Right, right, right. Yeah. Most of your churches have got away from the foot of the cross. Listen, I don't know you from Adam, as they say. But if your church and your, your congregation have got away from the foot of the cross, find you one that's still there. That's right. Repent for staying as long as you did. And go find the other one and have church. Right. And worship. Right. And worship. Because we've just got just a short time. That's it. And I tell you what, I believe God is going to have a move in this nation. I know it's coming. Yeah. And here's what I told somebody. Dignity is going to be right smack dab in the middle of it. Come on. Come on. I, I, it's going to happen. Come on. We're going to be there. So, you know what? Get in or get out. Come get on. run over. That's what it's going to be. Get in, get out, or get run over. Because God's going to have a book. I want to do a song called At the Foot of the Cross. This is what they said didn't have proper grammar. But this is what I told them. I said, you know, I remember when the prophets wrote the word and, and we're to take away nor add anything to them. So I thought, that, well, these guys are big shots. These guys have done this a lot longer than me. So if they want me to change this, I'll give it a whirl. And I changed it and I couldn't even sing it. So I said, Lord, forgive me. I'll go back to the foot of the cross. I'll write it back down exactly how you gave it to me. Uh -huh. And that's exactly how I'll sing it. So I want you to listen to the words of this song. But it's a little bit humorous. But I'm telling you, it's got a meaning. Inspiration in your life is what teaches you about things. What you experience. This is a story about me. Thank you. 
You want it to turn out right? Get to the foot of the cross. I see it. Get on your knees and God will take care of it. I'm telling you. Either way, what is it? What do you want to do? Cue me up one. I don't know what he's going to play, but we're going to do it. Thanks, Gloria. 
I should have said it, I guess, before I got started. We got any snake handlers in here? <laughs> I said that, and there was four people raising their hand in the back. They looked at me and said, what are you going to say now? I said, I said, well, good. We're glad you're here tonight. We're so glad to see you. And then people said, can we take you out to dinner after church? I thought they was going to take us out and put us in a snake pit. But if you knew you could go down and you could buy that $200 million ticket for $2, and he was guaranteed. Let me tell you something about money. Money's going to burn up. Right. There's billionaires that would give their billions if they could get another week. You come down to that point, you know you're leaving. There comes a time in your life when you know that this is it. I believe that. I saw, I saw Tina's little mother. I saw her raise up and I saw her tell Tina, I love you. And I said, I love her. I tell you, we were talking. I said, I love her. She said, I know you do. But there comes a time in your life when you know this is it. And you need that peace of God. But I know of a thing that is better than that two hundred million dollars. I know of a, I got a song called "Even Me I Can't Lose." This is a guarantee. I want to sing this song to you. My sister was diagnosed with cancer, fourth stage. I gave up. I didn't want to see her like that, but God healed her. But while she was there. She wrote this song. And I said, how in the world since can you write a song like that, leaving this world? And I said, I'll sing it. And I went to the studio and I recorded it. And I was the first person I played it to, I took it straight to her. And she sat in that little chair. And she was 40. At the time, she may have been about 40 years old. And she has two artificial hips. But me and Taylor was talking to her the other day. And I said, how do you feeling, sis? The Lord healed her. She said, I'm going to hit the ground running. They called me for another doctor's appointment, but I don't have time for them right now. I said, hey, run, sis. Don't let them probe. Don't let them dig at you anymore. They're like archaeologists on you. If you let them dig, you'll find something. Don't let them dig. I'm telling you, you've got enough uh, false material on you. You don't need nothing else. Keep writing. But listen to the words of this song called Either Way I Can't Lose. And I want you to think about something. How big is your mountain? How big is your mountain tonight? What are you facing tomorrow? What are you facing next week? Listen to this.
Don't leave it up in that CD. Praise God. Nice one. That's right. That's Noah's chicken move. <laughs> this is our baby boy, Noah. Noah, you look up there and sing your song while he's getting this. And I want you to play. I tell you what, we get accused of being the crab family. We, y'all is not the crab family. We are not. <laughs> when Jason was about eight years old, he's Noah's age. I used to play the piano. I still play it. You guys got some good musicians here. That's right. Got a good praise team. Give yourself a Son, I don't know none of you because I know some of these back here, but I'm going to tell you something. Take your child's Xbox. Take your child's PlayStation. Come on. Put it in the drawer. Get them a guitar and a piano. Right. And set it. Come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me, he gets his music time in. You see right now he's been on the road for four days. He plays piano. He, he's learning to play. He sets and plays and he sings. And <clears throat> listen to me. You don't know how many churches that we visit that don't have anything. Uh-huh. They have all this music, just like you guys have. And nobody to play. It's sad. The devil has snuck in through the parents. Is it okay, brother? Oh, boy. They gave us Xboxes and Playstations and plates and worship all the Lord. Come on. I'm telling you the truth. Come on. Seen it happen. Right. That's why you go to these churches and you, you ain't got nobody to do nothing because... They ain't nobody ever sit back down to a piano. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody ever sit back down to a guitar. How do you think these songs come from? God gave me these songs to write, and I didn't have a controller in my hand when I done it. I'm telling you, God is good, and if you want to work for the Lord, He'll give it to you. But you have to desire it. I still believe in fasting and praying, and you'll get it. Don't let the church, 20 years from now, the Lord tarries His coming, don't let all these musicians... Grow old and leave this life, and all these children that I see in here grow up and never be able to take the place. Come on. Come I want Noah to sing a song to you that he sings called God is Bigger Than the Boogeyman. <laughs> and he sings all of our songs, believe you me. We got our 10th grandbaby on the way in August. We have two girls in August. This is our son Noah. We've got, uh, we love our babies. Yeah. And you know what they do? They go around with iPads, but they go around singing, You Can't Tell Me I'm Dying. <laughs> they got our music downloaded. That's the first thing we want to do, ain't it, buddy? You got your music on your iPad, don't you? I thought. So, nothing. Thank you. Thank you. This is no one. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's watching over you and me. <laughs> We love our babies. We like them too. Yeah. Jimmy's kids are usually on the road with us, but during school it's a little bit different. Uh, we, we like our family. We like our family. Um, Tina got a text said, I'd love to hear your husband sing through the fire. And I said, she ain't married to Jason. <laughs> Jason was eight year old and he used to stand by the piano and say, I'm going to sing like you someday. And I asked him a couple years ago, I said, do you remember doing that? He said, I do. I said, why don't you get on national TV and tell everybody that you sing like me, I don't sing like you. <laughs> he said, I can't do that. I said, well, I didn't figure you would, but I, I thought I'd ask. But I want Jimmy to sing a song called uh, The Lion, Lamb, the King. Have you heard the Crab Family do that? Yeah. Do you like to hear the Crab Family do that? Yeah. Well, you got a new favorite. <laughs> yeah, I can't sing it like Jason. Not now. Boy, we love you all to hear me when I ain't got cold. <laughs> the copper vice is getting ready to die, so it's like we'll cut that off. We'll just keep saying it. All right. Yeah. I'll go over to it. Still standing there smiling at everybody. You should have been fine. I had it. I would have had to be this. Brother, he used to work for me in the mines, and I tell you what, I was easy. <laughs> That's nice. Let's go for some fun.
like I told you weeks ago. Right. Bill Cross asked me, he said, Thank you, how, how long are you going to be able to sing like that? I said, like what? He said, how long are you going to be able to sing hard like that? He said, because from the time you hit the stage, do you get up? I said, listen, brother. I said, David, dance before the Lord with all his mind. Yeah, what do you want me to do? I said, you'll be giving just a little bit here and there so I can last longer. I said, if God can do what he wants to do in one second, and if I give him my all for one second, and I'm in his anointing, and I'm in his will, right. I said, he can get her done. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. I said, I'm not an old man yet. Don't let the grandbabies fool you. Cue me up, I can't explain it. Has God ever done anything? This is this will be this will be it. Has God ever done anything for you and you couldn't explain? Let me tell you something. I've told you this several times. I used to grow up listening to preachers, brother. You you grow up in this. And preachers say, Man, I drove for three days on empty. Stuff like that. I drove the whole revival. And my gas hand was on empty. They tried to say that the Red Sea was just ankle deep, but the Bible says it went through a dry. Right. So ankle deep water. Don't be, uh, go down here and walk around. I don't been talking about this bottle right here. Yeah. We might erect us a house down there. <laughs> a pontoon house. On floats. <laughs> but I know for a fact that we have driven when the gas light come on and said 50 miles to empty. And me need to go just a little bit further, brother. Mm -hmm. But that it never changed. Come on, come on. I've seen it not change. And a lot of people, a lot of skeptics, I know I used to be a kid. And I thought, you can't drive three days on empty. But I watched that thing, and me and my wife sat and watched it together. I said, look, it still ain't moved. It still ain't moved. Somebody could say, well, it probably was stuck. Well, it might be. But I, I refuse to think that God didn't say, okay, I can just let this go. Come on, man. That old man out there, we was at a church.